with Harry Pokrant, CEO of Hive. Boots on the ground here. I know we've been at gold mines before. This is my first time really at, at a you know a crypto plant. So tell us a little bit about what's happening here in Iceland. This was our first acquisition uh, with, Genes with Genesis Mining. So behind us here, we've got all GPU, uh, GPU rigs, which are essentially mining uh, mostly Ethereum, but other alternative, uh, other currencies as well. Uh, you can hear all the fans going yes, and all this I feel activity. My, my hair, my hair is blowing from the wind. Exactly, and it's cold outside, and, and and it's blowing through these rigs, and it's quite warm and toasty in here. So, so anyways, it helps to be in a cold climate. And that's why we're in Iceland. We all know this face, Frank Holmes, U.S. Global Investors. He's the chairman of Hive and a majority shareholder in the company. Thank you for having us in Iceland. It's really been a learning experience for me here. You're taking me out of the gold mine and bringing me into a, a crypto mine, Frank. On top of a volcano. On top of a volcano. How do I beat this? Yes, cheap electricity, that's why we're here. Green energy, it's the least expensive. And you saw some of the operations where they're fueling a complete Olympic-sized pool. If we have to talk all in sustaining costs, for example, right? Uh, how do you calculate that here? It changes daily. Right. <clears throat> okay, so then your input costs change daily with, with network hash rates, and, and, and of course the crypto prices are extremely volatile, just like the gold price. Well, it's an incredible country, Iceland. What a place, what a setting. It's an amazing country. I, and I think only 340,000 people uh, sitting on this incredible, inexpensive yeah. energy. I hear a lot of ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching in here. Tell us about the operations and, and, and you know what, what we're producing here on a daily basis. Well, we have six GPU cards per rig, and we have thousands of rigs. So every day, they're mining coins. Right, right now, this facility is mining Ethereum and Ethereum-related coins. Some people would say, well, why would I invest in the miner and not just buy the coin directly? Well, a miner is re always required in a public blockchain in some capacity. And a miner always has to have a return on capital. But if there's no financial skin in the game for a miner, they have no incentive to maintain trust. So do you see similarities? Is it like asking someone physical gold versus the mining stock? Exactly. That's, that's a great way to put it. Uh, you have a lot of operational leverage when you're, when you're, in a, when you're investing yeah. in the mining facilities, right? Uh, they get the tokens. You know, the margins are roughly 80%, give or take, depending on the day and the hash rates and all this good stuff. But the reality is, you're getting the tokens at a discount, a great discount, an 80% discount at times, because that's your cost of mining them. As chairman of Hive, what's the vision? What's the next step for Hive, Frank? Well, based on what the coins are today and our growth rate, we're fully funded until September, where we're going to ramp up from we started only in September of last year from using two megawatts of energy, we're going to 44. Wow. So a 20-fold increase. I want to ask you, Frank, because I think this will resonate with a lot of our viewers. You are a precious metals guy. How did you wrap your head around the crypto world and, and embrace it? Because few people that I know, and you're one of the few, can love gold and love Bitcoin. Well, listen to young people. Young people like yourself, my son, my godson. Um, listen to millennials, why they like it. And the other part was, Gold is all about trust. The US dollar is about trust. The geo, this whole idea of the digital world is about trust. Now digital currency, Bitcoin, Ethereum, are the digital trust of money.